सो जैन टू ऑल ऑफ यू टुडे आई विल टीच यू अबाउट द ग्लोबल क्लाउड एक्सचेंज मार्केट ओरिएंटेड क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग दिस इज द टॉपिक इन यूनिट फोर माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर जयश्री जैन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन ए के जी सी सी एस सी डिपार्टमेंट सो वी विल लर्न वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द ग्लोबल क्लाउड एक्सचेंज एंड हाउ कैन वी कैन गिव द सर्विसेस और कम्बाइन द वेरियस प्रोवाइडर सर्विसेस at the global end so that uh, the user can avail the services from uh, anywhere at any location in uh, from the world so basically we can say what is global exchange uh, we can say this is a form of market oriented cloud computing means we are going to uh, convert uh, the cloud computing services uh, uh, through the global marketing so what is uh, the meaning of market oriented cloud architecture so we can see here what is the meaning of uh, this market oriented means what is the need uh, why we are going to uh, make it market oriented so basic need is consumer will require the different quality of services to be maintained by their providers because uh, every one every user want that uh, uh, if uh here she is going to pay for any online service uh, over the cloud then their quality of service should be maintained so there is a requirement of better qos so for achieve this we required the uh, we required that uh, rather a uh, user have to be purchase the services from different different provider and the user have to pay more for taking the cloud services so we uh, can combine uh one broker can combine the take the services or can take the lease of the uh, servers from different different provider and can make a federation of the cloud servers and uh, have to make one interface so that one ui so that user can interact with those uh, uh, platforms so that uh, user can get the broad level of services and better qos can be easily maintained so this is one of the requirement provider will need to consider and meet the different qos parameters so there are different different cloud vendors and uh, those vendors have different qos requirement like uh, uh, if we are going to purchase any product in the market so we are going to purchase a uh, light so there are different company like philips or uh, havels so uh, i have to be uh, check Uh, which one is more reliable and giving me the more quality and uh, at the better rate so we this is a point to provider have to be meet on to the different quality of service parameters so market oriented resource management is necessary to regulate the supply and demand cloud resources at the market equilibrium so that uh, this supply and demand condition can be fulfilled easily and user will get the maximum services so this is a diagram of market oriented architecture here we we have this is a architecture where at the bottom layer we have the physical machines these are the servers and uh, these uh, physical machine are going to be combined from the different different providers so that uh, uh, we have ample amount of the resources and uh, with the help of these physical machines these virtual machines can be easily generated by the full virtualization so we have to apply uh, from only a single server we can generate the multiple virtual machines here and after that we have the sla resource allocator so what is the <coughs> purpose of this resource allocator this is the main part uh, of this diagram in which uh, this resource allocator have the service request examiner and the admission control means there is a kind of administrator uh, there and uh, this administrator have the different service management like uh, customer driven service management computational risk management and autonomic resource management so uh, we are going to combine or make a federation of these services why because uh, uh, these all user get the maximum resources at the minimum price and this service level agreement will also get combined because each vendor have its own sla but when these uh, services are going to be club uh, onto the one platform then this sla have to be merged and uh, after that there will be a common policy should be maintained so there is a admin which will maintain the uh, common policy 
so it will just to manage the customer driven services or computational risk if there are certain risk or fault in the uh, server then uh, the backup or recovery uh, mode of uh, recovery will be there and autonomic resource management should be there so they are these these are the functions which this admin will control vm monitoring should be there pricing dispatcher accounting and service request monitor means uh, every virtual machine that is going to be attached here will uh, be monitored frequently and uh, whether we need more vm to satisfy the customer request or whether we can decrease the virtual machines so we are monitoring will be there and pricing pricing scheme means uh, whatever will be the resource going to be customer is going to be higher so what is what should be the pricing scheme there and dispatcher will allow to uh, allot the resources to the customer and after that we have the accounting and service request monitor so accounting accounting will uh, contain all kind of uh, measurement of the resources acquired and service request monitor will uh, monitor how many customer have taken the services and how many customers are currently using the services or availing the services so it will monitor the request further uh, customer have uh, to add on more services or not so this is and at the end we have the users and brokers means uh, the top end user will going to take the services and broker will um, allow uh, going to be merging the federation um, make a federation of these resources so we can say market oriented architecture is what there will we have user and broker that submit the service request from anywhere in the world and we have the sla resource allocator that that is the interface between the cloud provider and the user so this is the sla resource allocator so already i have discussed this part so this admission control team will manage the customer driven services computational risk and autonomic resource management and these are all the functions which will be done or maintained by the admin so this global exchange of uh, resources means in order to support large number of application services consumer from around the world cloud infrastructure provider means ias provider infrastructure as a service provider have established the data centers so i already told we have uh, different data center of the different vendors and uh, when uh, we going to combine these data centers from different different geographical locations so that all over the world can be easily uh, combined and uh, user from the broad area can also be uh, get the access to the cloud services and ensure the reliability in case of site failure if one server is going to be fail then another server will wake up to take the services so this is the example amazon has a data center in united state one of the east coast and another on the west coast and europe so if east coast server is going to be um, down then other server will remain as it is so it will be fault tolerant however currently amazon expected cloud customer to express a preference regarding where they want to Uh, deploy their or host their application services like uh, we can say for in github we uh, just going to pro in github we are going to deploy our project uh, actually it is giving the service of platform as a service so that github can be hosted where uh, that platform will be hosted so that all the data will be stored on that location uh, on that data center so this is a preference given chosen from the uh, taken from the customer and amazon will going to fulfill it next amazon doesn't provide seamless automatic mechanism for scaling its hosted service across the multiple uh, geographical distributed data center so this is also the drawback so for fulfilling for uh, fulfilling this drawback uh, there is a need of the global market so this approach has many shortcoming first it is difficult for cloud customer to determine in advance the best location for hosting their services as they may not know the origin of the consumer of their services so for uh, customer point of view it is very difficult how customer will know which which location is the best location 
means uh, uh, customer have to be uh, just ensure or find out the reason where a uh, customer will choose the location so second software as a service provider may not be able to meet the quality of service expectation of their service consumer originating from the multiple geographical location mean if uh, a customer is a software as a service consumer then uh, like google drive we are going to store our data on the google drive so how can we uh, ensure that google drive location is uh, reside on which data center of that company so uh, consumer cannot be and this amazon will uh, like we can say these provider will not provide the best quality of service to the student uh, to the customer when this uh, service is going to be avail at the different geographical locations so this is one of the drawback this necessity building mechanism for the seamless federation of data center of cloud provider or the provider supporting the dynamic scaling of the application across the multiple domain so uh, for the for these reasons like uh, there is a problem in hosting uh, the customer uh, services on the uh, different platform and uh, at the different geographical location and on the software provider quality of service is going to be compromised so necessity is that uh, there will be a federation of these data centers so that all the it will support the dy dynamic scaling of the application and in order to meet the qos target of the cloud customer so it is very much important so that we will main main point is we have to attain the qos targets and we have to just uh, support the uh, qos and there should be uh, dynamic scaling should also be there so in addition no single cloud infrastructure provider will be able to establish its data center at all the possible locations throughout the world so this is a drawback uh, if we are going to take the service from the amazon and amazon have its data center in the bangalore uh, site so uh, all the data will uh, going to be stored at the bangalore data center so there is a no common <coughs> single infrastructure that will cover throughout the world that will cover the locations throughout the world so that data center is limited and uh, this range of uh, uh, band network bandwidth will also be limited so this is one of the issue as a result cloud application service providers will have difficulty in meeting the QoS expectation we have already learned this and hence they would like to make use of services through the multiple cloud infrastructure service provider who can provide the better support of the customer need so for this reason we are going to make a federation or group so that multiple providers will going to be make the services more quality have uh, provide the more quality of the services and have the dynamic scaling feature and co covering the all the geographical locations uh, of the users so this kind of requirement arises in the enterprise with global operations and the applications such as internet services media hosting and web 2.0 applications so these application are designed so that uh, uh, they can be uh, these services can be obtained uh, from any geographical locations so next is this necessity federation of cloud infrastructure for seamless provisioning of service across the different provider so the services are going to be uh, provisioned uh, among the different different providers and uh, to realize this cloud bus project at the university of melbourne has proposed so this university of melbourne proposed the inter cloud architecture inter cloud architecture supporting the brokering and exchange of the cloud resources for scaling the application across the multiple cloud so for dynamic scaling purpose uh, this inter cloud inter cloud means that is the federation of the cloud providers so this inter cloud services uh, have the support the brokering and exchange of the cloud resources so all the resources are going to be exchanged on the global range so we realizing inter cloud architecture principle in mechanics is uh, in their offering cloud provider will be able to dynamically expand so we already explain uh, there is a dynamic scaling there will be high qos 
and geographical locations all uh, user can access the services from any location in the world operate as a part of market driven resource leasing federation it means all the provider will give their servers on the rent that uh, so that uh, the broker will combine the server from the different different provider and uh, can easily provide one interface and provide the services to the user in easy manner so uh, this federation will going to be form for example sourceforge.com host their services based on negotiated sla so there will be a requirement of a common sla so that customer will aware that uh, uh, policy should be uh, there and customer have to uh, be attain that so they need to be able to utilize a market based utility model as a basis of provisioning of virtual software services and federated hardware infrastructure among the users with heterogeneous application so we have different different application and data is of different type so these all heterogeneous application will be uh, can be executed over the uh, cloud infrastructure so this market utility uh, model on the basis of provisioning the virtualized software services so this federation have the virtualized resources and uh, these resources they will help the user to make the uh services more uh, avail the service in more easy manner so global exchange of uh, what is the limitation of the present uh, service provider inflexible pricing is there suppose amazon is going to be uh, take the charges uh, uh, for one hour uh, amazon is for using the one hour uh, period or one day amazon is hiring some dollar uh, price in dollar or ibm will uh giving you service in uh, have the some amount so there are different different uh, vendor and different different pricing scheme is there customer are restricted to offering from a single provider at a time so consumer are restricted that they have to avail the service from one provider at a time unable to swap from one provider to another and no standard interface so there are there are some challenges over a uh, single cloud and uh, this cloud exchange is what it acts as a market maker for bringing together the service producer and the consumer so it will combine it will make a bridge between producer and consumer and aggregates the infrastructure demand from the application brokers and evaluate them against the available supply currently publishing by the cloud coordinators so what is the role of exchange means all the applications uh, will be evaluated through the broker and uh, they will be available to the to supply to the cloud coordinators so to it support the trading of cloud service based on competitive economic models such as commodity market and the auction so it will support the uh, trading means uh, all the provider will uh, gain uh, more money because uh, their server is going to be leased on the broker side and if uh, there are more and more customer that are going to avail your service then uh, there will be market will be high and uh, so commodity market will rise so cloud exchange allow the participant to locate the providers and consumer with fitting offers fine such market enable service to commodi commoditize and thus will pay the way of creation of dynamic market so this is the main point dynamic market infrastructure for trading based on sla so availability of banking system within the market ensure that financial transactions pertaining to sla between the participant are carried out in a secure and dependable environment because i think uh, that uh, broker are going to be combine or fed, going to be control all the provider services so broker have the direct control over the services not uh, the providers so only so we can say that is a secure and dependable environment so this is a diagram what is a global cloud exchange we have an enterprise it consumer and uh, these are the cloud compute cloud is there storage cloud compute cloud and storage cloud so there are different different uh, clouds uh, deployed publicly and uh, this is the main global cloud exchange market and uh, we these enterprise <coughs> will have to request capacity to avail the service 
फ्रॉम द डिफरेंट डिफरेंट ब्रोकर सो वी हैव द डिफरेंट ब्रोकर वन टू थ्री अप टू ब्रोकर एन एंड दीज ब्रोकर विल गोइंग टू बी नेगोशिएट द बिड एंड इफ द बिड इज लो सो कस्टमर दिस एंटरप्राइज विल अवेल द सर्विसेस टू विच टू विच ब्रोकर दैट हैव द बिड दैट हैव द वैल्यू ऑफ लो बिड सो दिस विल बी डन एंड दो ब्रोकर विल बी सेलेक्टेड एंड ब्रोकर विल कंबाइन द डिफरेंट डिफरेंट क्लाउड सर्विसेस सो वॉट इज द मेन मीनिंग ऑफ ग्लोबल क्लाउड एक्सचेंज फर्स्ट इज द मार्केट डायरेक्टरी मेन डायरेक्टरी इज गोइंग टू बी ग्लोबल बैंकिंग सिस्टम विल बी देयर और ब्रोकर्स प्राइस सेटिंग मैकेनिज एडमिशन कंट्रोल रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम कंज्यूमर यूटिलिटी फंक्शन एंड रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट प्रोक्सी सो दीज ऑल द फंक्शन विल वर्क ऑन द ग्लोबल क्लाउड एक्सचेंज and what are the different challenges challenges are unwillingness to shift from traditional controlled environment means once you have going to take the service from the uh, broker then you have to uh, you can't shift from other brokers regulatory pressure how to obtain restitution in case of sla violation like uh, we have decided in legal language we have different different punishments decided in case of criminal uh, purpose so sla violation means if customer is going to be uh, violate the sla so what will be the punishment